Hello everybody, it's Kyle from Dan's and today I have a pretty interesting question and it's one you might be asking yourself. Is Tamron still worth it with the new 61 megapixel A7R4? So before I get started, I just want to let you know the new Tamron 17-28, which is featured in this video, is currently back ordered almost everywhere, but we actually have several here in stock. So at the time of recording, if you want to check the link below, you can order it from our website. All right, so if you're into photo news at all, you've probably seen that Sony announced their new 61 megapixel Sony A7R Mark IV, and that's an incredible camera, and up to this point, it's the highest resolution 35 millimeter sensor in mass production. So what that means is any lens on it is gonna be put up to the test at that 61 megapixels. And Sony touts their G Master or professional line as having 100 megapixels of sharpness. So what chance does Tamron have, right? Well, that's what we're gonna test, we're gonna find out. Uh, to give you an example, most of the G Master lenses, especially the zooms, are over $2,000. And the two lenses I'm testing from Tamron are both are about $900. So there's a big difference, but let's see if there's a big difference in image quality. So I set this test up with five lenses and I shot each of them on the a7R 3 and the a7R 4 I shot uh, at ISO 100, 10 second delay, and electronic shutter to eliminate any other variables. This is important because at this resolution, any movement at all can really affect the image quality. And that's something to consider too if you're gonna be purchasing that camera. The lenses I used are the 17 to 28 Tamron paired with the 28 to 75 versus the 16 to 35 G Master from Sony as well as the 24 to 70 G Master. And as a control, I have the Sony 90 millimeter macro. I know that lens has an incredible resolving power. So if we're gonna see any difference between the resolutions of the two cameras, that's where we'll see it first. I'd like to note that I did do this test twice to make sure my results were spot on to eliminate my chance of any human error. All right, so let's take a look here. First off, we have the resolution comparison between the a7R 3 and a7R 4 We're going roughly from 40 to 60 megapixels, which is a 50% increase. So if we look at these right away, you'll notice that, yes, the a7R 4 under these ideal conditions definitely provides more detail. But you'll also notice that it doesn't give you 50% more detail which is normal because we've got so many other limiting factors. What we're photographing and the sensor itself is affecting the effective resolution. This could be a limiting factor with the lens or in, for longer lenses, things like atmosphere. Um, but in an ideal situation, we're getting like 20% better sharpness. Now remember this goes away if you boost your ISO way up or if your sh shutter speed's not fast enough and there's any motion. So you're only gonna get these at the best case scenario. So first up we have the Tamron 17-28 versus the Sony 16-35 G Master. And if we take a look here, we've got R3 for both and R4 for both. They both benefit from the boost in resolution, but I don't see either of them struggling or falling behind one another in this test, which is good. This is what we want to see. I'd say realistically, the G Master may have a little bit better sharpness, but don't forget, we're zooming in crazy far here and we're in ideal conditions. So there are other things to consider here, but as far as resolution goes, these are very, very comparable. If you notice too, I'm gonna to show you the full image here. We're zooming in quite a lot. We're zooming in about 300%. Uh, one of the reasons for this is because you're probably viewing this on a phone or maybe not a high res monitor, and I'm only uploading it in 1080p, so I need you to be able to see the difference. But the point is, it's the equivalent of like looking at a skyline and zooming in and trying to see what restaurant is open. All right, so next let's take a look at the 28-75 Tamron versus the 16-35 Sony. Oh, and do note, I, for all these tests, I shot at 5.6 because it's kind of an ideal aperture. We're only going after resolving power here. There's other things to consider, but we're just talking about megapixels and resolving power. So anyway, we bring it up again. You'll see R3 for both of them, R4 for both of them. They will look pretty similar here. Uh, under ideal conditions, they're looking both really good. I wouldn't say I can give either one of them really a win um, in terms of resolving power here. It would have to be up to margin error. They're so similar to me. Okay, so if we look just real quick, here's a 2.8 comparison as opposed to shooting at 5.6. You'll notice it's about the same results. Um, 2.8 on all the lenses is not as strong as 5.6, as we'd expect. 
but they all do well and they all benefit from the resolution bump, which is really good to see. All right, I'm gonna remind you, if you're someone who shoots high ISOs, you're not shooting in a tripod or in more ideal conditions, any differences in the resolution bump, and this is more towards the camera, you're not gonna notice as much. If you have to crop, you physically have the pixels to do it. Your image is not gonna become pixelated, which is important, but you're not gonna get the same benefits as you get 50% better images across the board. Now, with that in mind, all these lenses did really, really well for this test. I would happily recommend any of them. And of course, the Tamrons too. I mean, obviously they, for 900 bucks-ish, they did extremely well. So if you're considering them, definitely do. Now there's other things to consider, like I talked about. And I did another video, if you wanna check that out, comparing like size, ergonomics, weight, the range. Those are important to consider also, but as far as resolution goes, the Tamrons did absolutely awesome. So I definitely recommend them. Okay, to wrap up, I just wanna remind you that at the time of recording, we're one of the few places that have a few of these items available. So please click the link below if you want to get it. If I helped you decide, it'd be great to support the store. Otherwise, keep it short and sweet today. Have a great day, everybody. And if you have any questions, come on in, see us, message us, whatever works for you. See ya.